the joke was that our state flower is mildew <laughs> because, it <laughs> because it rains so much. And so you might just accidentally push yourself in the wrong direction a little bit, and then it's like, ah, oh, I'm gonna pay for it the next day. There's no guarantee what it will do it. But I was just like chilling, I look over and I was like, oh, hello, vagina. I was gonna keep that, that compass uh, pointed, you know, true north to what you believe. No, definitely go, don't go to school. Go to rock and roll school. <laughs> That's kind of crazy, but I you don't know. remember this. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> but when it comes to write lyrics i i really it's a pain in the ass for me you know <laughs> wow this is what i want to listen to during my whole life did you really bring that up that was a private conversation <laughs> <laughs> well, i hope people keep thinking that i'm really relaxed while i'm playing and do not realize when i'm playing the difficult parts of the song those things are always interesting just because i'm so like uh... <laughs> Scattered. Polka metal can be interesting. Pol polka metal, yeah. yeah. I like it. It's a microphone. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? I'm not sure. I don't remember. I, I, I know who to sue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was that being told I can't and I shouldn't made me want to do it. And I'm really hopeful that it's not possible. <laughs> I want to be in their presence so I conduct my life in a way that. I hope that they want to be in my presence as well. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. I'm Mark Sugiyama from Eclectic Arts, based here in Seattle, Washington, in the United States of America. And thank you so much for joining me on this Tuesday, the 15th of June, 2021. And uh, as always, I have a few quick housekeeping things before we get to my interview. Uh, I do have more live streams coming up on Thursday at 11.30 and 1 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. I also have the return of the fun table sessions on Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And then we have a uh, pretty special band interview with, with the full band on Sunday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. If you'd like to know who the guests are, please follow me as Eclectic Arts Media, one word on Instagram. That's where I post everything first. And if uh, and some of that information migrates over to other social media platforms, uh, but some of it's very much exclusive to Instagram. If you happen to be watching this um, right now or down the road on YouTube, if it's your first time joining me, if you could do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel, I greatly appreciate that. And if you want to know what's coming up through YouTube, you can also hit the little notification bell, but be aware that it will send you emails. And uh, that could be quite a few based on uh, all the <laughs> live streams I have coming up. And if you're on the Twitch side of things, if you could follow me over there, I really appreciate that. I gained quite a few um, new followers yesterday after I did my interview, which is also a little bit of different degrees of separation related to the Milwaukee Film Festival, which is also what this interview is um, related to. So I, I greatly appreciate that. If you would like to make a tip or a donation or a birthday tip or a donation, I have a PayPal me link always in the description of every YouTube video that I have. My birthday is tomorrow. And uh, all that money goes right back into what Eclectic Arts does, including gear, backgrounds. I need to do some more painting at some point. <laughs> uh, but that's only if you're so inclined and if you're in a position to do so. So just know that that hyperlink is always down there. And any of the guests that I ever have on, there's always information also in the description related to them. So if it's film, bands, uh, ballet, opera, those types of things, there's always links down there. So as soon as you're done with the interview, you can go right to their work and check out uh, more of what they're up to. So, okay, let's get to things. As people kind of know, I've been really privileged to be a credentialed reviewer for now four film festivals in a row. So I started in March and there was another one with the Seattle International Film Festival in April. And then last month there was the Milwaukee Film Festival. And this month right now, Tribeca Festival is going on literally in New York right now. And I'm part of the virtual part of that. So I'm a huge film fan and I've been so grateful for uh, the opportunities to review a lot of films. And during the Milwaukee Film Festival last month, there was one film that really stood out to me and I was really glad that I'm gonna get a chance to talk to the director and writer of this film. And uh, so let's get to my introduction. 
My guest today is an acclaimed film director from Spain. He has produced one of my favorite films from this year's Milwaukee Film Festival called Baby. Please welcome to the Eclectic Arts Virtual Studio, Mr. Juanma Bajo Yoa. Hello. Hello, Mr. Sugiyama. How are you? How are you? I, uh, bien. <laughs> e2? <laughs> fine, I'm fine. I'm really fine. Thank you very much. Gracias, amigo. Thank you so much for taking the time. I'm, I'm so excited to get a chance to talk with you about your film and uh, everything about it because it's, so, um, it's so intentional. There's such a really unique style to this film that I loved. So let's start with um, how did you get involved with Baby? How did you get uh, this project started? And what was the timeline like for filming it? Yeah, um, this is a project of my own. It's uh, like almost of my all other, uh, other films except documentaries. I started writing Baby in 2016, about five years ago, under the idea of um, a metaphor about life and the sick uh, disconnection of the human being with himself and with his environment, with uh, our ecosystem, you know? So um, it, was, it was shot in the summer and fall of um, 2019. The main shot with, uh, with the stars took about five uh, and a half weeks, but the second unit, uh, with inserts and shooting in nature took more than a year to complete uh, because it was very complicated with all of these spiders and rats and everything, horses and a lot of animals. Um, but with the help of some people called uh, Augur Nature, a very professional team of cinematographers and, and bi biologists people, uh, it was possible. Okay, wow. So I. I... That's interesting that it was written so long ago, you know, in 2016, and then you got to do five weeks of shooting, and then, you know, all of the uh, second unit things took, you know, a lot longer to get all those other shots. Yeah, it was uh, difficult to get the money because it's, you know, it's, it's uh, they say uh, it's a weird film, you know? It's not for me, but but some people say it's not commercial, it's, uh, it's strange, it's weird. So it's very difficult to, to get the money with this kind of films without dialogues and everything. Okay, I, I see, I see. Uh, and you just brought that up. So for people that haven't seen the film, there's sound, of course, in this film with a beautiful musical uh, music soundtrack. And there's also going to be if it's screams of pain or anguish, but there isn't dialogue. Was that intentional from the get-go that you didn't want to have actors reciting dialogue? Uh, Inside of me, I wanted to do without dialogues from the beginning, but um, I didn't know if um, uh, narratively uh, it would be possible to get to overcome that challenge because it's a big challenge. In addition, during the financing process, um, when the possibility of a film without dialogue was suggested, uh, everything was complicated. So um, finally, I had to write a script with some dialogue to pass the commercial censorship, you know? And I shot those uh, few dialogues, but I didn't use them in the editing. So I at the end, I decided uh, not to use these dialogues. Okay, Is, uh, did that create any problems when the finished film didn't have dialogue? Uh, I don't know how it works for, in terms of like, if the financer folks thought, thought oh, I thought there was going to be a little bit of dialogue and then you ended up cutting that out. Did that create any problems or, or not a problem? Oh, we have problems uh, with, with, this, um, with this film without dialogue. So we have problems with everything, with, uh, with televisions, with financing, with, with commercial release. Uh, so it was very, very hard, even with festivals. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's interesting. That's, that's unfortunate that, I mean, I understand, you know, perhaps from you know, a commercial side of why they want to see a traditional film that has tons of dialogue and characterization. And there's characterization in this film, of course, but that's, that's unfortunate that you can't put your artistic vision out there and have people just jump on board and say, no, I understand what you're trying to do. Let's just do this. You had to fight for it. 
Yeah, yeah, it's, it was hard, but uh, at the end, I, uh, I think uh, I, um, cinema, it's, uh, we have a lot of tools in cinema. You have the stage, you have the actors, you have the light, you have the music, you have the silence, and you don't need dialogues. So for me, it was a big challenge to try to do this film without dialogues, and now I'm, I'm happy to, to do it. Yeah, well, I was going to say it, it came out. It's a beautiful film. It came out wonderfully without the dialogue. So, Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah it, to me, it's something that uh, it, it it allows you really to kind of get into the characters and also allow them. They have to do a lot of uh, emoting with their face and obviously physically with their body, but also it becomes a challenge. And I think it's a, a, a good challenge um, to put that across. Yeah, I I, uh, I trust in in people, I trust in you, I trust in in the audience. So so you can understand uh, uh, all this uh, information with uh, images and the, and the sound and the silence and the music and everything. But uh, I think usually it's not uh, it's not uh, very easy to 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 um, confiar uh, trust to trust. In this kind of uh, uh, commercial type of, of uh, audience, yeah, that's. There's going to be some folks that you know, I don't know. They just want to see a Marvel film or something. <laughs> but I, I think there's other people that are, they, this film will find its audience if it hasn't already, because it's again, it's really a beautiful film, and there's so many different elements of it, and. Um, I'm curious too. What were some of the hardest scenes to film uh, for Baby? Uh, it's always especially difficult to shoot with animals and babies, you know, <laughs> because you can't treat in a contract. So they do what they want. No, no, what they what what you do, what you what you want. But um, we were lucky because we had the help of uh, of a team. This team called Aur Nature with the animals. Um, in addition to this, uh, the whole shoot with Rosie Day was complicated in general due to the physical and emotional demands of many scenes. It was very hard for for the for the actresses, you know. Uh, all the time she was uh, uh, at, at the limit, you know, with uh, her emotions and everything. So it was it was hard for her. Yeah, that. That makes perfect sense, and without giving too much away for folks that haven't seen it yet, um, that Rosie, who plays the, the lead character, has to go to some really, really uh, dark places in this film as a character, and so to do that take after take, yes, that must have taken a lot out of her. Mm. Yeah, and um, uh, you mentioned about uh, it was hard to get this film made and people to finance it and everything else and you also mentioned even like with film festivals so trying to get you know get your film into a festival that doesn't have dialogue uh what were some of the film festivals besides the milwaukee film festival that um the film got into oh the, this uh, has been a very complicated year with many festivals canceled you know and others with online versions that at first we didn't accept because maybe it's a very cinematographic film made for big screen you know so um, at the beginning, we say no to some festivals, online festivals, because I, I want you to, 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 to show the film only in, in the big screen. Even show we have been lucky and participated and received many awards in important festivals like Sitges. Uh, I don't know if you know Sitges in Barcelona. Uh, Tallinn Black Nights Festival in Estonia. Uh, Seminci, it's in uh, Valladolid in Spain too. Uh, Nantes Film Festival, uh, Santa Barbara, of course, here in there in United States. Um, Milwaukee, as as you said, um, and now in Bifan, uh, South Korea, and Transylvania in Romania. Uh, now in July, so uh, we are we have uh, we are lucky. To, to show the, the the film in all of these festivals. Yeah, that's that's great that uh, the people uh, audiences are getting a chance to see it. And you're absolutely right. I remember when I was watching it at home virtually that 
I kept thinking, this is something I need to see on a big screen just because there's so much cinematically going on with this and the, with the visuals and everything else. It would just suck you in if you're sitting in a theater. Yeah, it's, it's because, it's, you know, it's a film very atmospheric, very climatic. So you, you lose something when you see the film, you know, on, online, you know, in, in the little screen. It, it, it's a pity. I, I, it's, it's very sad for me, but okay, we have a, a pandemia. <laughs> shit happens <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes it does and and you could be like one of my friends here who's a big uh film fan and she's got a huge projector that she, <laughs> she, she puts all her films on so that's not the same as a theater but it's close <laughs> i was I, I think uh in santa barbara um it was um, a drive-in uh show with a film a drive-in, you know, with cars and everything. It's very usual in America, not in in Europe. But it's very cold here in my hometown to 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 do a drive-in <laughs> show. The screening. Yeah, no, that's that's cool. I I know during the uh, during the pandemic over here in the U.S. that a lot of the drive-ins that's what they were doing because that way you could stay in your car. You're not near other people and. Um, I think we even did a couple of those. Yeah, we did a couple of those here in the Seattle area too, where they were showing some films on, on screen. So it was like, it's the best we could do at the time. And luckily things are starting to open up over here at least. So hopefully we get a chance to actually um, get uh, a film like Baby into an actual theater where you can see it on that big screen. Cause that, that is the experience for this kind. Cause some films, they can be okay at home, but some of them you need to see it on that. And this is one of those films. Yeah, I, it's not, you know, it's not a, a blockbuster, you know, like Avengers and all of this. Uh, but I mean, I mean, the the, op the opposite, I mean about at uh, atmosphere, I mean about um, climatic. Uh, uh, so you can only find when you are alone, you are in darkness and you are, you know, quiet. And you can't do your dinner and you uh, Check your Facebook and everything. You need to to be in a in a place only with with uh, yourself. No, that's what what I like cinema. That I I love cinema because your connection with these uh, people who make this film is absolutely it's great. It's it's a, a, a great contact, a, a great. So it's you lose something when you when you see this kind of films in online. It's a pity. Yeah, absolutely. I, I actually try to take the the mindset when I've been watching things here at home where I, I actually I turn off my lights, I put my phone away, I do the whole thing. I'm like trying to replicate <laughs> of seeing that experience where I'm like, let me try to ex you know really take in what the creative creative team's trying to do here instead of you know having my lights on or like you say, you know, eating <laughs> eating dinner or whatever. It's like that's not what this is supposed to be. Your undivided attention is supposed to be on that screen. Of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, I'm just kind of curious too that uh, I know you've done uh, you know other feature length films, of course, that have been very successful. You've done shorts, you've done documentaries, and um, what got you started in film to begin with? Um, I haven't uh, I haven't done film studies. Uh, I love cinema, and I start as a teenager uh, shooting shorts in Super Eight. Um, I didn't think I could become a filmmaker, but thanks to festival awards, I was able to to keep going shooting in uh, 16 millimeters and then 35 millimeters. And my short, uh, Victor's Kingdom, uh, obtained the first Goya to a short film in Spain. So it's like the Spanish Oscar, you know? Uh, then I shot my first feature film um, called Butterfly Wings, and won the San Sebastian Film Festival uh, 30 years ago, my, my God, and many other awards. So now, uh, and that moment, I mm, decide to, to, to make films for like my, like my work, to, make, to become a filmmaker. Okay, yeah. I start very young. I start really, really young, like a teenager shooting with my camera you know in my hometown with my brother and you know friends trying to to uh, to do something uh fun <laughs> you know <laughs> to have some fun 
Okay. And um, uh, one thing I was going to ask you, it's just kind of a side note. Did, and maybe I'm getting confused because I'm getting old, but did, did Baby come out on DVD recently somewhere? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's on DVD now. It's about uh, one month ago. It's on DVD with uh, the score, the music score, and a documentary, a documentary called uh, The Nature of Filming. Okay. okay. So it's three, three CDs, you know, one with the film, one with the score, with the music, and one with the, uh, the documentary. Okay, awesome. All right. I'm, I'm glad my memory didn't fail me. <laughs> <For what? laughs> okay. Um, and uh, what, what kind of advice would you give a new filmmaker? Uh, uh, a new filmmaker was a... Okay, yes, my advice is forget the movies and look for a good job. <laughs> no, it's, it's, <laughs> I, I'm joking. Seriously, I, I think a good uh, question to a young aspiring filmmaking, f filmmaker to ask himself is, do I really want to make movies to tell something or to be in the newspapers? Can I really avoid making movies? If the answer is yes, better leave it. You have to ask yourself if you, if you really want you to, to make films because it's very hard, you know. It's, uh, you have to put all your energy, all your love, all your time, all your everything to the movies. Uh, otherwise, it's impossible to make um, something important, something, something special, you know. So you have to to be very um, sincere, sincere with yourself, and and ask if you have something to to tell, or maybe you want to 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 be in the newspapers. Okay, no problem. <laughs> you want to be famous, or you know, to to know stars or or nice, uh, beautiful girls, or whatever. But I think it's very important to ask this question to ourselves. Okay, thank you for sharing that. And it, it, it makes sense because of the other fine filmmakers I've interviewed and also um, you know, bands and other artists that it really comes down to asking yourself, um, you know, why am I doing this? Why am I in this? Am I in this because I want to create something? I want to tell a story. I want to put my art forward or like you mentioned, Am I looking at like I want to be having my picture taken and I want everybody to love me and that kind of thing? It's like which one do you want? Because if you end up doing it for the wrong reason and an audience doesn't respond to it and then you don't like it, then you got nothing. So it's yeah. kind of like make sure it's your passion. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a passion. I think it's 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 not only a job. Of course, it's a job, and you can uh, get your money and but. But it's it's uh, for me at, at least it's 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 more it's something like I can't I can't live without it. It is I feel cinema and music too because I would like to be a, a musician. I can't I can't play the piano, but I, I would like to to play. But it's it's, it's a passion and and uh, and it's inside everything you you do. Uh, I'm 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 going. Uh, walking the streets, uh, thinking in my stories, thinking in my films, thinking in, in people, in characters, in the stage, in in the sound, in everything. So it's, uh, I think, it's passion. Sorry about my English. <laughs> no, it, it, <laughs> it's very it, it, difficult for me to to ex to try to explain me. But um, I, I lose my English, so I now I, it's it's hard for me to try to speak. So thank you for your comprehension. <laughs> No, your English has been really good, and your your points are getting across perfectly. So, um, it's it, no, it's not a problem at all. It's been really really oh. good during the interview. You're very kind. <laughs> I think it's a problem. <laughs> I feel like an idiot trying to speak. So, thank you very much. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's been again. Anyone that watches this, that's um, English speaking, they'll be under, understand exactly what you're talking about. Um, how you're talking about your film and the artistry and everything else. It's it's coming across fine. Believe me. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, and to, to, to kind of wrap this up, what so what do you have coming up? What have you been working on? 
Oh, um, I'm working on a new thriller uh, called uh, El Mal. It's like the evil. Um, so I can, I hope I can find the money this year to shoot the uh, next one year. Um, so it's, you know, it's, uh, maybe it's not so weird, like a baby. It's more, um, more commercial, even more commercial. But it's a thriller too. It's a very, very dark thriller too. Okay, well, th that sounds very, very interesting that you're going to be working on a dark thriller next. And uh, again, for people out there, if you haven't had a chance to see Baby, or when you get a chance, um, at least on a, a broader distribution scale, um, it, it, you you need to take your time, like we were saying during this interview, and block out all the distractions. If you can see it in a theater, that's even better. But if you can't and you have to see it at home, like I did, turn off the lights, put everything away, and just kind of get lost in this film. And you, after a while, you won't even notice that there isn't dialogue going on because the storytelling is so strong and the performances are so good. So um, thank you so much for taking the time, to, well, tonight over there <laughs> to do this interview. Uh, I really appreciate you. it. And so it's half past nine here in Spain, in the Basque country. So uh, we are uh, a, very, a very big uh, storm out there with lightning and everything, you know, and a hard rain and everything. So now it's great. It's my, uh, it's my great time. I, I love this kind of, of, um, of uh, 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 summer, you know, with um, storms and everything. It, it always makes things interesting here in Seattle. It's, it's actually sunny. <laughs> <laughs> a sunny in Seattle? Yeah, it's not raining here. How about that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but again, thank you so much for taking the time. And if we can get to a point where we can talk about uh, another project in the future, I would love to do that, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, wherever you want, you, you know, our contact and everything. So we are here waiting for you, for your, um, your love and your questions, wherever you want. Sounds very good. Thank you so much again. And uh, have a good night over there in Spain. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.